Okay, let us try to understand Spring MVC architecture. Spring MVC architecture is nothing different from a traditional MVC architecture, but the only difference is we now have so called a front controller, or in case of Spring, that's going to be the dispatcher servlet. So, whenever a request is sent from the client, the HTTP request, the web server will take a look at the web.xml file and it tries to look for a mapping. And this time, inside the web.xml file, we don't try to map the URL with servlets, but instead we would try to map a URL with a front controller. And in a typical case, we would write the URL pattern in such way that all the HTTP requests will end up in the front controller. But it is the job of the front controller to determine the right servlet where it needs to send the request to. And in order for the controller to figure out to which servlet to send the request, it will consult so called a handler mapping. Now this is a class that is part of Spring Framework and we need to explicitly specify the URL mapping with a servlet inside our config file. But with the recent versions of Spring Framework, you don't have to do that. We can just simply use annotations. Once we take a look at an example, you will have a better picture on the same. And once the request reached to the servlet, servlet will then delegate the call to model within which we'll have the business logic. In case of Spring, those are called services. And the service layer will make use of DAO objects or data access objects to be able to communicate with the database and then finally we'll get some kind of a result and in spring terms we call that result a model which is essentially an object that holds a particular data that we will be populating to the end user. The servlet will then send the model along with the view name to the front controller. Now the key thing to note here is the control is just going to send the view name. It does not specify where that view is residing or the file extension. For example, if we were to call hello world.jsp, the view name is just going to be hello world. It does not tell the path of that file or the extension, which in case of JSP, it's going to be .jsp, or in case of velocity, it's going to be .vm. So, once the servlet sends the model and the view name to the front controller, it's the responsibility of the front controller to send the model object to the desired view. But how does the front controller know the location of the view and the file extension? Well, it will take help from the view resolver, which is again will be configured in the spring config file. And then after that, the model will be sent to the view and then a tool like Jasper will try to convert that JSP file to an equivalent servlet and then the servlet engine will try to send the HTTP response using the response object back to the client and so the user will see some result. The main advantage of this approach over traditional MVC architecture is that let's say that you're using JSP as a view technology and now you are trying to switch to a different technology, say Apache Velocity. Now you don't have to worry about making changes in the servlets because nowhere in this servlet code we are hard coding the view technology. But all you have to do is to make some changes in the view resolver and you're good to go. And that's going to save a lot of development effort involved. Well, in our next video we're going to take a look at a simple example, basically a simple hello world example thereby you'll have a better picture on what's happening. But in order to keep things simple, I'm not going to use database just yet. We're going to be using until this part, the controller part. But sure enough, down the line, we will be using a database in order to create our projects. I will see you soon.